I hope the presentation will go fine. It was a very early wake up to be here. Um, so I'm going to present the study authored with Ellen uh, Goodman, and it focuses on uh, the soft moderation of Trump's uh, tweets before the removal of his account from the platform. Uh, I will give some background information. So on November 3rd, 2020, the US elections took place and Donald Trump, although the results were not out already, uh, started sharing tweets that stated that he won the elections, that there was election fraud, um, etc. Uh, and even when the official results came out, he disputed it. And in the course of uh, uh, three months, he repeatedly uh, posted uh, false information uh, through his account. Um, then, and Twitter decided to, to, to deploy soft moderation, that is to place, among others, uh, some warning labels on Trump's tweets, refuting or disputing the content of his messages. Um, this continued until January 6, more or less, where there was the Capitol attack uh, in Washington, uh, where uh, this initiated further discussion about uh, his uh, tweeting activities, and finally the platform decided to ban him on January 8th. Um, so our study wants to understand the effects of this soft moderation prior to the banning of Trump's account. Uh, and there are there are reads of very good studies that had preliminary findings by the time we started our analysis. So there was this article that in a controlled environment found that showing a uh, fact-checked uh, Trump's tweets actually polarized more uh, viewers instead of reducing uh, misinformation belief. Uh, furthermore, Zanetto in a great study found that tweets with warning labels had more engagement compared to tweets without warning labels while Sanderson et al. found that tweets that were removed from Twitter um, by the platform had uh, continued to disseminate on other platforms and, and had higher engagement. So there is the question, okay, how should we design warning labels? Is it worth doing soft moderation? So we wanted to understand in this specific case study, how did different warning labels um, on uh, false tweets, impact A, misinformation spread, and B, magnitude and C, type of uh, uh, user engagement. Um, and to operationalize that, we, we, we measure misinformation spread by the number of retweets and quote tweets that Trump's tweets got, user engagement magnitude by the number of favorites and replies, uh, the tweets got and user engagement type, we operationalize it with four variables. First, assessing the content of the replies, B, measuring how toxic uh, user replies were on his tweets, um, and also creating uh, variables about the, the type of users, what were the political orientation, who engaged with Trump's tweets, but also their tweeting activity. So prior studies show that a lot of contact on all social media platforms is uh, created by a handful of users and the majority, like 80, 90% of users is either completely passive, they don't um, tweet or they don't post or they have limited activities. So it, it is interesting to see who gets activated, who gets muted, who changes their behavior based on uh, the labels on the tweets. So what we did is we, we both used the Twitter API and we, we crawled the platform and collected 1,241 tweets from Trump's account between October 30th, 2020 and January 8th, 2021. Uh, their engagement metrics, the warning labels that were placed on them, if they were placed, and uh, over uh, uh, almost 2.4 million user replies on these tweets. And you can see here on the left, uh, a variation of the labels on the tweets that were placed. The most common was this claim about election fraud is disputed that was placed the most, uh, while others were about learn about the US 2020 election security efforts, etc. And on the right, you can find the timeline of 
Trump's tweets and the ratios of moderated and non-moderated ones. So the first finding of the study was done by doing descriptive statistics. So we only took out the original tweets of Trump not the retweets uh, that he did of other authors, and we categorize them by false content. So if they were referring to election fraud, if he was stating that he won the election, or if he was referring to the insecurity of mailing ballots with an intercoder agreement of 0 0.81. And it is interesting what we found is like, we found uh, initially result complied with previous studies. That means that labeled tweets were engaged were shared uh, more on the platform and user engaged more with them but when controlling with the content of the tweets like that means focusing on 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 tweets that were contain misinformation that were either uh, moderated or were not this difference vanished that means that misinformation was the was a stronger driver uh, for uh, users engaging with the tweets and sharing them rather than the, the warning labels themselves. And to look deeper on that and to understand, okay, are there specific features of the labels that influence how users interacted with the tweets? Uh, we, we categorized um, tweets, uh, uh, tweets labels in, in types, uh, veracity labels that uh, explicitly correct the information on a tweet, contextual labels that provide more information about why, about an issue. Uh, we created a variable overlap, label overlap with underlying tweet. Uh, that means whether the, the, um, the warning label placed was had the same topical uh, content with the underlying tweet. If it had the same linguistic content, that means it used the same words to, to refer to an issue. For example, if Trump said fraud, uh, the label also mentioned fraud, or there was no overlap at all. And we also created a variable that uh, quantified the rebuttal strength of the variable of the labels. Um, and here are some examples of tweets. For example, on the left, you see a label, learn how voting by mail is safe and secure. This is a, a contextual label because it does not directly um, refute content, does not say why something is false and so on. Um, on the right, you see a label disclaim about election fraud is disputed. This is a veracity label. And on the bottom, you see another veracity label that said election officials have certified Joe Biden as, as the winner of the US presidential election. And that would have a label, but that would have for example, moderate uh, rebuttal strength, since if you read Trump's tweet, he refers to a local, to the elections uh, in a specific county and not in the general US elections. Um, so we created regression models with log dependent variables about uh, of, of the likes, retweets, replies, and quote tweets that the tweets got. Uh, and as uh, independent variables, whether a veracity label was present, whether a contextual label was present, uh, what was the overlap of label with the tweet, how was the rebuttal strength of the label, the date that the tweet was made, and also if there was a misinformatory content uh, in the tweet and of what type. And what we find is was that veracity labels were related to more user engagement and sharing compared to contextual labels. But we also found that labels with linguistic or topical overlap were associated with a decrease in users liking, retweeting, quote tweeting, and replying to label content. In all cases, misinformation was a more it was a, a, a robust um, factor for why users engaged or shared uh, the tweet. Um, to further understand uh, labels and engaging users, we categorize a random sample of 70,000 users in the liberal conservative scale based uh, on Barbera's walk. Uh, we also calculated the median amount of tweets its users generated. Um, and what was interesting is that we found that uh, tweet moderation was associated with the mobilization of less active users. And you can see it uh, in the first part of this table. So um, labels that, uh, tweets that had labels of them 
uh, mobilize less active users, which correspond which are closer to the majority of users on the platform. Um, and we also found that labeled tweets were more likely to mobilize liberal than conservative users. And I'm going to talk about that in a while as well. Uh, then we trained the structural topic modeling uh, algorithm uh, on the tweets uh, on 200,000 replies and then predicted the rest of the corpus. Um, and we also uh, class, uh, counted the, um, the level of toxicity in these replies by using Jigsaw's perspective API. And here you can see the 64 topics that the model show, uh, yielded. And there are some clear uh, differences. For example, in unlabeled tweets, comments were more about COVID because Trump might have done um, tweets about COVID that, of course, were not misinformation. Uh, so we find divergences like that, but we also find specific topic categories related to fraud, uh, like um, here, where you can see that labeled tweets uh, had more fraud-related replies. So what we did there is like we, we classified uh, and uh, we trained a large language model to predict whether a reply will be uh, pro-fraud related or against fraud related or neutral. Uh, and we, 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 we created models that wanted to, 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 that calculated the propensity of a user generated a pro-fraud or against fraud related comment on Trump's tweets. And we created a multinomial regression to that purpose. And we also created a better regression model that predicts the propensity of a reply to be toxic. Uh, and we found that users employed more toxic language when commenting on labeled tweets, uh, but this toxicity reduced the stronger the rebuttal of a label on the to, on tweets content was. Uh, we also found that um, presence of uh, rebuttals uh, a, associated with users discussing more about uh, the the fraud related claims. Uh, but also that um, having a, a warning label on a on a tweet um, may activate it more uh, uh, we, more liberal users uh, to engage with the tweet and less Republican users to engage with it. Um, and these are are diverse sets of. Uh, um, of findings we had, and what are these the general implication? We found that an optimal use of warning labels providing strong rebuttals and textual overlap between label and tweets can be a plausible way to mitigate misinformation spread and toxic user engagement, especially if these are associated with more context about the situation or a case rather than just saying, oh, this tweet is false. Uh, we did not detect any backlash effects, uh, but we did detect effects on how and which users discuss politically. Uh, and with, because we studied a specific case study, it would be good to, to, to plan controlled experiments or field experiments that can systematize findings, cross-check them, and make knowledge generalizable um, uh, across other settings, because Trump's account is a special case. Um, and we, we underline the need to, to focus on spillover effects of content moderation. Sometimes um, users will believe what they will believe and users will might share misinformation and there is no perfect content moderation. So it is important to, to think about how the type of moderation impacts the political discussion in general. Um, and finally, I will end up with a tweet that Elon Musk uh, did uh, recently that uh, he said the social media platforms policies are good if the most extreme 10% on left and right are equally unhappy. The world is not so simple and um, it is important to understand who is present on a platform, how they behave in order to understand what is a correct moderation and what is not. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for this very insightful uh, presentation. Are there questions? Um, I, I was a little confused by the, the, I think, user mobilization slide that you had. Um, 
could you explain a little bit more what, what um, you were showing there? Sure, let me uh, present it again. Uh, this slide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you see like uh, tweets without labels, the median user who generated the tweet had 13 uh, replies in our corpus, so they were very, very active users, while when the, the tweets of Trump were labeled, either with a veracity or a contextual label, the median tweets a user made that generated the reply on these tweets was nine and eight. That is significantly smaller. And generally, that means that more users that usually are passive, they don't generate content, did generate content when a warning label was present. So this, um, because we don't have the full data on Twitter, we don't know who is passive, we did not collect the general user tweets on the platform, is not conclusive, but it does show that uh, it generated um, it activated users to make replies that uh, usually they would not generate tweet uh, content on Twitter in in the same level. That's okay. the yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then, uh, if I'm reading it correctly, this was more common among liberals than conservatives, or yeah. Yeah, exactly. So generally, most users who responded to Trump's tweets were liberal. liberal. Um, and also uh, we found that exactly like, for example, if a veracity label was present, that made liberal users engage even more uh, with these uh, tweets. For contextual label, we, fo we found the inverse effect, conservative users and liberal uh, generate content to the same degree, but our sample size for contextual labels was small, so I don't want to say that uh, this is a definite result. Okay, thanks.